This tutorial is going to focus on blanks, what they are, their proper application, when to deploy them, and basically how they fit into your QAQC obligations. Furthermore, it's going to show you how to use the Radon Report Manager software in order to successfully integrate blanks into your records. This video does assume that you have an existing familiarity with Radilex EPERM system and with Radon testing in general. If not, then it's recommended to start with a more introductory video first. All right, let's start with the basics. What is a blank? A blank is a radon detector that is not exposed to environmental radon levels. Because it is not exposed to radon, the purpose of the blank is to ensure that it measures no more than the lower limit of detection as defined by the manufacturer. When utilizing Radilex Electrets, it is safe to assume that any radon concentration at or below 0.3 picocuries per liter, or approximately 11 becquerels per cubic meter, to be the lower limit of detection. Electrets deployed properly as blanks will not be affected by either environmental radon levels or background exposure from gamma, although the normal rules for latent voltage decay will still apply. Ideally, an electret deployed as a blank should be no different than any other electret that you have in storage. In short, it is not being exposed to any radon or ionizing radiation. Most importantly, because it's not being exposed to any radon, it shouldn't measure any. And that's the goal of deploying a blank, to make sure that you're not accidentally measuring radon when you're not supposed to be. How and when should you deploy a blank? First, prepare the blank detector just as you would with any normal detector. This means inspecting the surface of the electret to ensure that it's clean, and if it's not, clean it with a solid blast of compressed nitrogen. After making sure that your electret surface is clean, read and record the initial voltage, and then load the electret into an appropriate chamber. Then, when you're ready to begin the radon test, Deploy the blank alongside your exposed detectors, but leave it closed. After all, the whole purpose of a blank is to not measure radon. If you are using a tamper-resistant twin box, you can place your blank into the space between the two deployed S-chambers. And that pretty much covers the deployment aspect of a blank. Once this is all done, there's really not much you can do until you retrieve the radon detectors and conclude the test. So let's talk briefly about retrieval. Just pick it up alongside your other detectors. And because it's already closed, that's one less thing that you'll have to worry about. However, you will need to record the end date and time. Once you get back to your office or laboratory, read and record the final voltage, just as you would with your other electrets. Ideally, you'll want to see no voltage drop on your blank, especially for a short-term radon test that only lasted for two days. However, a small amount of latent voltage drop, which is approximately 1.5 volts a week for short-term electrets and 1 volt a week for long-term electrets, is allowed. Moving onward, let's talk about when we should deploy a blank. In order to comply with standard QAQC practices, a minimum of 5% of all radon tests performed throughout the year should have a blank associated with them. This means that you should start off your first or second test with a blank, and then deploy another blank every 20th test thereafter. You may need to modify this a bit in order to maintain 5%, but this will keep you very close. And to keep track of things more easily, the Radon Report Manager will show you the number and percentage of blanks that you've performed throughout your QAQC calendar year. Now that we have the theory down, let's put this into practice and walk through a blank deployment from within the Radon Report Manager software. For the sake of brevity, which isn't something that I normally excel at, let's load up a previous record that we've already created. This test record only has two detectors deployed as a co-located pair within the same group. So let's add a field blank here. After the record is finished loading, let's start off by unlocking it, and then moving down to the data entry window and typing in a new serial number. 
Because we'll be putting this blank into the same group as our other two detectors, let's enter in the same box number. As soon as we do that, a bunch of our information gets filled in automatically, such as our locations and our start and end dates and times. So we tap through the data fields and enter in our initial and final voltages, assuming of course that we've already concluded the test and have all of this data sitting in front of us. As soon as we do that, you'll notice that our average radon concentration changes, and this new detector shows up as measuring a concentration that is less LLD, or less than the lower limit of detection. Okay, so far so good, but we don't want this detector to be classified as a normal detector and bring our grouped average down. So we click on the field blank checkbox at the far right end of the row. As soon as we do that, we'll see that our previous average and radon concentrations are restored, and this detector is now officially classified as a field blank. After it's all done, we can preview the lab report and see our blank detector, SAA003, alongside our other two detectors. It's clearly labeled as a blank, and we know that its voltage loss was acceptable because it's marked by a pass result. There is one more report type that we can take a look at, the customer letter. As this is the report that is normally meant to be read by customers, the addition of a field blank can be a bit needlessly confusing here. As such, by default, any field blanks will be hidden on the customer letter, as shown here. Even though the blank is attached to the record, it won't show up. However, if you'd like the field blanks to appear, then unselect the Hide Field Blanks checkbox, and then, when we preview the report this time, you will see the blank appear on the customer letter. So, at the end of the day, the decision is yours on whether or not to display the field blank on the customer letter. By default, the option is set to hide it. And we're finished with this example. Adding a field blank to a test record is as simple as adding a new detector and clicking on the field blank checkbox at the far right end of the row. Sometimes though, you may want to create a specialized blank record. This is best used for office blanks, which are blanks that are deployed within your own laboratory or office. And as such, this specialized protocol will provide more detailed information that specifically concerns blanks. I'll try to move through this quickly. We create a new record, and let's use our own company as the customer. Copy that information over to the test site, and set the test type to QAQC. Then, in the required information box, let's select field blank as the protocol from the drop-down list. From here onwards, it's standard fare. Every detector that you add in a blank protocol will automatically be categorized as a blank. So let's add in a few detectors, along with the dates and times, and then fill in the initial and final voltages. While I'm doing that, you may notice two different column headings in the data entry window, the total days and the VLPD columns. The total days will show the duration of the blank exposure in days, and the VLPD column stands for voltage loss per day. When we're finished, we can preview the reports. The letter report is straightforward and otherwise unremarkable. But if we preview the lab report, you'll see that the total days and VLPD columns appear. In all honesty, this is a very specialized protocol that likely won't see much use. But because this is a video on using blanks with Rattelec software, it would be remiss not to touch upon it. And it does have a few data fields specifically for blanks that the other protocols lack. The final half of this video is going to be spent on frequently asked questions which are hopefully going to fill in some of the gaps that the first half created, starting with what is the difference between a field blank, an office blank, and a shipping blank? Any blank that you deploy alongside normal measuring detectors is called a field blank. So 
when you deploy a radon test in the basement of a house somewhere and decide to deploy a blank during this test, that would be considered a field blank. Most of your blanks are very likely going to fall into this category. Office blanks are deployed in your laboratory, office, or wherever your place of analysis may be located. Unlike field blanks, they won't be deployed alongside detectors that are measuring the radon concentration and can even be deployed in keeper caps. This means with a little extra bookkeeping, many of your electrets can be utilized as office blanks when they are in between active measurements. Lastly, Shipping blanks are mailed alongside detectors that are being sent in for either spiking or performance testing. In this context, a shipping blank is meant to serve as a control, or even as a bellwether of sorts. If it loses a large amount of voltage, then it's worth taking a look at all of your detectors to see if you can figure out what happened to the package. Shipping blanks should be loaded into the same type of chamber as the other detectors that are being mailed. At the end of the day, the differences between these three categories of blanks are ultimately nominal. Radilek's general philosophy is that a blank is a blank, period. Field blanks definitely count towards the 5% QAQC requirement, but opinion is divided on whether or not office blanks and shipping blanks can help to fulfill this obligation. In the Radon Report Manager, all blanks are counted equally and help to meet this 5% requirement. Next question. Can I mail my shipping blank in its keeper cap? No, you shouldn't. Radilek recommends that you mail your shipping blank in the same chamber configuration as your other detectors. The purpose of the shipping blank is to serve as an indicator of whether anything went wrong with your shipment or analysis, so all variables should be minimized. This includes the chamber. Moving onward, how much voltage should a blank lose? Ideally, any deployed blank should lose only a minimal amount of voltage. More specifically, the amount of allowed voltage loss is determined as a function of both elapsed time and the electret type. Short-term electrets are allowed to lose 6 volts per month, which is defined as a static period of 4 weeks or 28 days here. Crunch the numbers, Divide 6 into 28, and we'll reach an allowable voltage loss of approximately 0.2 volts per day. The long-term electrets are allowed only 4 volts to be lost each month, which turns out to be a little bit more than one-tenth of a volt each day. Furthermore, the voltage reader itself can have a variance of plus minus 1 volt, and going from plus 1 to minus 1 results in an allowable range of 2 volts, because you have to go from plus 1, 0, then minus 1. This seems like an influx of numbers, so let's run through a few quick examples. Let's look at a short-term blank electret deployed for two days. During those two days, it is allowed to lose approximately 0.2 volts per day, or 0.4 volts total. But we also have to add 2 to account for the plus minus 1 volt variance on the voltage reader. 0 0.4 plus 2 equals 2.4. But because we're not reading fractions of a volt, let's round down to 2 and up to 3 and make that our range of allowable voltage loss for this blank. Any number less than or equal to this range is perfectly fine and ideally, a 48-hour blank shouldn't lose more than a single volt. Let's move on to our next example, a long-term blank deployed for 91 days. To get an exact calculation, let's start by dividing 4 into 28, which will give us our acceptable voltage loss per day of approximately 0 0.143. And now we'll multiply this product by 91, which is the duration of our test in days and then add 2 to this. We always add 2 to account for the reader. This means that our long-term blank shouldn't lose more than 15 volts throughout the measurement. The Radon Report Manager does all of this for you automatically. But if you're not using the software, there's no reason that you can't do it all by hand. 
just multiply the allowable voltage loss per day by the test duration, which again is in days, and then add 2. As the resulting number will most likely be a fraction, give yourself a volt on either side as tolerance. If your blank is lost less than or equal to this number, then you're in the clear. And if you're not, well, that brings us to our next question. What happens if I fail a blank test? First of all, you can't really fail a blank test. However, if your electret has lost an unacceptable amount of voltage, then we strongly recommend that you review your results and inspect the situation. These are some clues that should get you started. Is the surface of your electret clean? If not, clean it with nitrogen. Is the interior of your chamber clean and in good working order? Is the filter still in place? Are you getting consistent voltage readings? You should take each initial and final voltage reading at least three times and make sure that you're getting the same number three times in a row. Are you sure that your dates and times are entered correctly? Once you discover the cause of the unintended voltage drop, this will help you improve the quality, accuracy, and precision of all your future radon tests. Okay, the last two questions are easy. Next up is, how do I find out how many blanks I've deployed from within the radon report manager? To see how many blanks you've deployed, go to the main menu and click on the setup button. This will open a new window. Click on the QAQC tab and you'll be able to see how many blanks you've performed in addition to spikes, duplicates, and total detectors deployed. Our final question kind of ties into our previous one. How do I view a detailed report of my deployed blanks? If you're looking for an actual report, then you'll need to click on the Reports button from the main menu. This will open up a new window, and you'll be able to select Field Blank Annual Report from the list box. Make sure to select the appropriate year in the drop-down box, and then you can either preview, print, or create a PDF of the resulting report by clicking on one of the corresponding buttons below. And that wraps up this video. We've discussed what blanks are, how they should fit into your QAQC plan, and how to use them with and without our software. If I've missed an important question or equivocated too much on one of my answers, give us a call at Radelec and let us know. Thanks for watching.